following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman on this last trading day of the month of May, 29th of May. And uh, my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, market days. Now, let me tell you what's going on here. It's really, really important that certain uh, parameters are held in the Dow and the S&P. We are seeing a break of key support levels on the shorter term. We're seeing chart patterns that are reflective of internal weakness, residual strength, but internal weakness. And how we trade into next week is going to be very, very important. This is exactly the reason why. Just I always start off with the, um, this is what I show my subscribers, the E-minis, I give the parameters to watch. The 212 level was the key 200 period uh, moving average support that it held so beautifully uh, in the uh, E. This is the June, March E mini. But it's now trading at 2106. And the pattern that I draw in the daily chart of the Chapman wave falling axis and ex declining, expanding cone formation, lower highs and much lower lows. And then if you break to the upside, and what I said, you've got to break. Uh, 2122 to 2124 to be able to get some kind of a sense that you're going to be able to get back to the 2134 level. So let me cover this step by step. Being the last day of the week, last day of the month. In the E mini, I'm going to move this away. You see the arch formation peak C1, C2, C3, and a C4 at slightly lower levels than that initial uh, trend line resistance at 21, 24, 25. So we're quite a considerable distance below. Trying to establish some kind of a base here at Dow 17, that's called 18,000, S&P at 2108. Now, let me move this and I'll show you what I'm looking at. If this candle closes after a potential leg E that makes a peak E with a round number 2134 high, that MACD, which is still positive, but let's see if it closed right now, 2952, 2932. So 2932, and that was 29, so that's 30. So, so far, it is still positive, just barely positive, but it is. If the Dow, if the S&P E-minis Close at 2105 down 16 right now. Probably if they close down at 2102 or lower, then you will break a couple of things. You'll start to break um, the test of the 200 period, no, the nine period moving average supporting the weekly chart. Um, the MACD will probably cross negatively, making lower highs at each one of these peaks from this peak B to the peak C1 to the peak uh, E. And the stochastics at 90%. And that has been, for me, the benchmark that has been saying there is enough internal uh, strength in the weekly chart that we could see a pullback. Not yet does it say that the pullback, other than the letter in the Chapman wave being an E, that the pullback should be anything more than just a little bit of a pullback towards this trend line that we're looking at here at about 2080. It's another 20, uh, 25 points or so. Uh, yeah, 25 points or so. Okay. Now let's get rid of this and we'll start talking the real issue. The Dow, I-N-D-U. The Dow is down 133. It, it's been a very slow move to the downside today. Very orderly. I can't... I kind of get nervous when it's very orderly. Why? Because it means that there's perpetual selling. It means that, it, that the rallies have been more stabilization and then unstabilization as, in fact, it starts to break down. Uh, most importantly, you've got a potential peak F. It looks like a peak F right now. In the daily of the Dow at 18,351 on the 19th of May, and what's even more important is that you've started a leg B down with the MACD very negative and stochastic down of 55%. So what it's saying is 
the internals of the daily chart are starting to deteriorate. And all you needed from yesterday's close was a pop to the upside, just to the 18,160 level. Shouldn't have been a big deal. Failed to do that. Not good. And now you get to the weekly chart, the Chapman wave, cup formation that becomes what we call a drop bucket, double top, with a real large arch formation right there. That's the inversion of the lowercase h that suddenly forms a cup. So now we've got the arch after a, a small cup formation. Nominal new high couldn't close above the new high. 18,288 was the high. 18,351 was the last high. So putting that together, all I can say is that I've got levels to watch. That if there's a close down here, it'll be the first um, weekly close in the uh, yeah in the Dow, the first weekly close after a new high. And that says start being very careful because if there are three out of two consecutive sessions, that's weekly sessions, with closes below the nine period moving average, you had better be careful because that will certainly impact the stochastic, which is at 85%, and the MACD, which is deflected lower. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, you've got the weekly chart, which has squeaked to a G, a peak G at uh, 18,351. And even more important than that, why don't I say 18,353? This would be 351. Just change that. I like to have accuracy here. Okay, 18,351 in the month of May. All right. Nothing yet says that the nine period exponential moving average of 17,000. 605 or 805? No, I think that's an 8. Right there. Come on, hit the right one. 17,605. That will be the key level in the monthly because a, a close in June below that level will be essentially the first time that there's been a close under the nine period moving average since the breakout um, of June of 2012. That's three years ago. Unbelievable. What a move. Okay. So, and, it's, and we're absolutely due for it. We are due for it. And because of that, our bias to the long side has been through attrition today and yesterday, slowly getting out of tra long trades. And we will start to implement maybe a little later on this afternoon, we will have triggered uh, an inverse uh, trade. So we'll be looking at that closely. Now, let's go on. What we're looking at here is that in this particular pattern, you see this vertical line, I'm going to expand this. You see this vertical line right here at peak D. You see how strong, look right there. The, the, stochastic, the MACD wasn't as strong as it was at peak C at 18,103 back at the end of, uh, um, in December of 2014, but it was still okay. And then it deflected lower. The MACD tried to rally and wasn't even near that. In this last move up, it was a move that I call the residual strength, meaning uh, you've put on your brakes, but there's enough momentum to say you're not going to stop on a dime. You're still going to go forward until such time as your, your, your disc brakes actually grip enough to stop you uh, with a complete halt. And that's exactly what happened right there. We turn around, and now you've got a very ugly candle for the week so far. I'm not sure how it can improve by the end of the day, even with the rebalancing of the Russell. Now, we've got a bunch of trend lines to look at. So the key support level, just based on the trend line itself, would be for next week, around about 17,900. That's just 86 points down. That's the first one. Now, let's go on. You see, you've got A, B. You've only got a C in the unbalanced volume. That's a little unusual. That should have been a D coinciding with that move up there. So that's the reason why I say that you've got to constantly be looking at the big picture, which in this case is the monthly chart, which says that I'm barely making new highs. I am making new highs, but boy, one, two, three, four, five, six months, six, seven months, and we're actually exactly where we were seven months ago. So that says that's wheel spinning in the sense that we've used up a tremendous amount of momentum, and at the same time, that momentum has not taken us very far to the upside. Doesn't mean that when the momentum slows down, you should smash to the downside. 
No, other things can take you to the downside. But at this particular point, what I do want to make a note of, and that's what I showed my subscribers way back last weekend and the weekend before, was that the MACD and the stochastic was starting to diverge. Think of it as, think of it as um, um, new highs, new lows, or think of it as um, advanced decline line. It's starting to deteriorate, you know, in 1929, the big smash. You had a long period of divergence between the um, advanced decline line moving lower and the Dow. So it doesn't say just because it's moving lower and just because you're pulling back that you have to smash to the downside. There are other things that are going to dictate the degree of weakness and a lot will depend on where the market is Tuesday afternoon to Wednesday of next week. And I'll, I'll explain why um, in a moment. I'm going to go to the S&P to explain it. SPX.X. Yeah. So here again, we've got an alternate account, F slash B. At this point, I still have to keep it as F slash B, although the Dow, because it made a lower low, is certainly looking like it has to be an F. But uh, I have to wait for the close before we make decisions. Over the weekend, I'll send out for my subscribers some charts and we'll be looking at that together. Here again, peak F, almost certainly a peak F today. There's no way that the Dow, the s and is going to go to 2134, uh, the high, all-time high, 24. 21.34.72. So we're looking at the monthly, and the monthly so far is the same as the Dow, just a squeak, squeak, squeak to new highs. But you can't say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six months ago, seven months ago, we were trading at the range. We're at the upper end of that range. So there is a positive divergence between the 500 stocks and the Dow 30 stocks. All right. If that's the case, and, and let's look at so let me just give the parameters a close below 20.98 to 20 20.92 at any day next week would be very negative for the s p and suggest that yes we have made some kind of a short-term top there could be an intermediate term top but we won't know until other parameters are met now, on the upside the resistance is at 2117 the nine period moving average was which was looking as if it was support earlier now let's go to the much broader iwm the iwm is holding even better because it hasn't gone it has not rallied all that well but it also hasn't fallen and this is the reason why i keep mentioning that we've got a bifurcated uh market in the sense that the few stocks that are still strong are essentially holding up the market, their, their sectors. But when I look at the majority of stocks within a sector, there's a wealth of evidence to say, hey, 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 things are deteriorating. So you've got to be looking at this as if we've got, so we're still one uh, long one. No, we're out of, out of our, our, uh, our, our one really good stock. It was acting very well. A little bit, a little bit of profit. Not such a big deal profit, but a profit nevertheless. And the Dow was uh, the 300% the, the Dow long that we had is a break-even trade. So now at this particular point, we've got one stock that with, with a nice percentage gain. It's acting very well. It's holding very well, but it's completely independent in many ways to the market. So you've got the S&P down um, uh, 11 at 2109. You've got a gold up 70 cents you've got if you're like me you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes and you can rest assured that everbank has spotted this opportunity too in fact they've just released the second running of their five-year market safe futures economy cd this is a cd that could really deliver but you only have until june 11th to take advantage consider the facts if the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're looking at the Dow down 125. SP is down 11. But look at this. The IWM is down the dollar twelve at 123.52, down 0.90, which is a bigger, uh, a bigger decline than the other two um, indices just mentioned. And look what we've got. We've got a wedge formation. And that wedge formation, really, this is a, a symmetric tri triangle. It's making a, not quite, but almost the same angle to the downside it is to the upside. See, within that, you've got the Chapman Wave uh, inside track resistance. Bam, hits it and comes back. You've got the sport, boom, it hits it and bounces. And then right there, it hits that little red line and the pinkish line, dashed line, and it comes back down. Now it's on the green line. Going to be really important. Can it hold? Will it break by the end of the day? This is a daily chart. Will it go to 122.90, which will pierce this? I should make it red. Pierce this red right there, key support level. Instead of breaking out to the upside in the green over there, which would be a positive. So we're going to be watching that. But the most important thing about this is that the weekly chart essentially is just saying, hey, 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 don't get too excited. I'm just here. Actually, this is really very much an oval pattern. I'm here in this oval pattern, another oval pattern. Let me get rid of this one here. Let me get rid of that because that had the potential for an instant restart. And go to this one here and show you something very interesting. Look, we've got there to there, there to there there to there so basically what's happened this is not a chapman wave stalk leg formation mm, as some of the characteristics but as of now it isn't quite it's more like the arch formation that says be careful 
because in the next two to three weeks, if in fact you take out the low of 120.24, that'll be very serious. Of course, you'd have to take out the trend line and then you'd have to go all the way down to these levels of support on the left side with the daily charts. But look at the um, weekly, ch the monthly chart. It has done the chap wave stalk leg formation. There's that strong leg to the upside. There's the body. And then it breaks the body and goes to a leg D. D is where you've got to be careful in the stalk leg. That's the neck formation right there. So now it's forming the head in the monthly chart. And it says, at any time in June, if you break to the upside, that'll be very positive action. A break above um, 127.13 would be very positive. However, it looks from the declining MACD and the stochastic at 85%, but turning around. You remember, I like to think that the MACD, which basically should be following the fast moving average, the green line, should be following the price of the stock, is diverging very negatively. And that's saying, hey, be very careful. That kind of divergence in the MACD, the longer term moving averages, is saying it's more important to be focused on that than the shorter term slow stochastic. So I want you to just clarify that. And you've got another, you've got a repellent from that trend line. It's the same thing in the 120-minute chart on a short-term basis. Look, there it is. And that says watch out because you're starting to make lower highs. You haven't yet started to make lower lows. So that gives, gets you back to the 122.47 area uh, because 122.52 is the last low. So we've got to be very careful here. This is the time, you know, I keep saying this is the time for caution if you're long. You just have to put in your stops, stay in that position until you're taken out. That's number one. And number two is this is a period where um, the only reason why you should be a little bit afraid of being short in certain sectors is because of the M&A activity here, uh, mergers and acquisitions. And, and that only should be there as a little bit of a yellow light. But the fact is that you should be able to trade it based on the sector ETFs, maybe if you don't want individual stocks. Now, that's exactly what we saw in the SMHs. SMHs have had a spectacular move. Why? Because of uh, Broadcom and um, Broadcom and ATR, I think, AT Altera, ALTR today, I believe. And now look what's happening. Sorry, just stall, but it's had a great move to the upside. So let's continue. You've got um, the TLT. Now, the TLT has just moved up in the same single leg A to the upside. Where is it? I'd say 123.50s is the area to watch because why? The 200-period the exponential moving average, that coral color moving average right there, that's at 123.58. And you've got your little doji candle, another doji candle potential right there. But it is a nice move up. It's up 78 cents at 123.32. And my concern has been that money will flow out of um, the equities into the safety. I love the word safety of bonds. And it has been the safety of bonds for quite some time. So we're watching it. And then 124.68 is major resistance on the 120 minute chart. Oh, sorry, on the weekly chart. Uh, that's that back line right there. Um, so that's bonds. And you've just got an ABCD FG. So this is ABC. And the 120 minute chart, it just made that. Oh, look at that arch formation. Sorry, the cup formation. See the cup formation left side? Oh. Let me talk about this. This I did this the other day, maybe, maybe yesterday, and it hit it perfectly to the penny. Oh, I'll be back in a moment. I'll be right back. We'll talk about left side, right side, price time match. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So here we are. We're back and we're looking at the Dow down 150 S&P down 50. Now this is going to be very important. You see, the bonds are starting the next bar uh, in the 120-minute chart, the TLT. I had drawn in from the the high that was made back at 11.30 on the 8th of May at 123.55. Let me just type that in, 123.55, 123.55. 123 that there was a cup formation that went down to the plumb line. I called it the plumb line right there. The plumb line low bar of at 11.30 on the 19th of May at 118.30. Then what I did is I drew in the right side of the cup formation. And I did a measured move, but I always like to base it on the manner that I always teach about how you use the inside wedge of the, uh, in the Chapway methodology, I call it the inside wedge target resistance line or if it's coming down, it's a target support line. And what it does, it goes to the horizontal side on the left of the major top that we're using. But there are times where I started off lower down. Why? Because you've got to go step by step. It's no use projecting out and saying, hey, we're at 118. I have 123.55 as a target on the 29th of May at um, by 11.30. Uh, yeah, I could I could have said that because that's exactly what was happening, but that would have been a false that, that would have been a leap of faith, because 
How can you even talk about that when you could still make an arch formation on the rally that went to 120, just over 120? Because if it suddenly came down to 119.30, you'd see that it was curving over and making an arch formation. So I like to do things step by step. And as long as the nine period exponential moving average has been holding, that says that it exactly, it, by 11.30 on the 29th of May, the 135, 123.50s area should be hit, hit. Well, lo and behold, that's exactly what happened right there. Look, right there this morning. We did it. So now everything else is a bonus because if there's a move to the upside, a decent close above this level, then what we'd be looking at is the next level of uh, resistance, which would be, let's get rid of this Fibonacci expansion. And we'd be looking at this level right here, which is 124.53. So it's about two points higher. But I like to go step by step. So let's see how, if this is a C or a G, a G would imply there's a failure below 122, a close below 122 in the next, uh, I'd say by Monday, Monday's close. And a move higher today, if this bar that we're in right now doesn't go above 123.52, but this afternoon the market pulls back even further and bonds go higher above 152, I'm oh, sorry, I keep saying that, 123.52, that will make peak C going to a leg D. And that's that trend line right there. And it says it couldn't be much higher. But in this particular pattern, if the TLT goes above 124.09, there's a real good chance it's going to the 200 period moving average of 124.87. And the last time that was able to close above it, well, the last time that it broke down, let's put it that way, was back at uh, on the 22nd of April when the price was somewhere around, uh, let's see, about 130. That's the way I like to look at these things. So this is a good, this is a very positive cup formation in bonds. So we'll watch it closely. Now, um, I had a, an email saying the NYA has taken out the low of the other day. Um, and now look at this. Let me just do this for you live. So you go to the lowest, most identifiable low bar. Yes, it could be A, trough B, trough C, trough D, trough E. Once you can do that, I don't always have to put in the troughs. I just do it because I know that there are so many students of the Chapman Wave that I need to be as clear as I can. And I like to articulate it and have it repeat over and over. And it's not going to repeat over and over if, in fact, uh, you aren't quite sure of what you're doing. So look at this D, E, and now you've got a little A. Wow, a very quick B, quick C, quick D. That's amazing. So the NYA, New York Stock Exchange, trading at 11,033, down 100 points, uh, down 0.90, the same as the the same as the IWM, but not the Dow, well, the Dow's catching up. It's now 0 0.84, 81, and the S&P's 0.69. So that says to me, I, I just want to do something else. This is Technical Friday. This here, let me just move this over. Uh, right, I'm going to show you something that I always find fascinating. I found it fascinating for at least 20 years. I, I've, I've found ways of overcoming it but not being 100% sure. Let me explain what it is. You see, you went to a peak E there, and the MACD went negative, and the stochastic went negative. Let me move it higher. And the stochastic at this particular point right here went from the 80-something percent, started to break down. Well, there's your peak A. It's a gray A because it did not go to the new high. But what happened was, that leg there went to an F slash B. And that's a new all-time high. So what has to happen here is looking at the chart, I have to say, where would support be if I was long? Where would the resistance be? Well, resistance is kind of open now because it's a, a, new, um, it's a new buy mode. Uh, no, sorry, it's a potential for a new buy mode. So I'll just draw in a trend line here and say, well, somewhere around there will be my resistance. And look what happens. It goes higher, and it goes right to, I don't know if it, I, I, I'm going to extend this to the right because I don't want to see what goes on. Now, I've extended it to the right. So it goes peak A slash nothing because it's a gray A under the previous peak E. 
Then it breaks out above the one penny above 11,236.79, gives you the new leg, and that goes F slash B. But very quickly, it pulls back to the 9 pm moving average and goes to a definitive C. Why? Because after G, you don't get H's. Ha ha. Now look at this. All of a sudden, you've got C, C at the resistance line, right? And you've got a pullback, and then you get a D. Where to that exact resistance line? Learn how to use your trend lines. I think it's so important if you're able to join two peaks or two troughs. Why? Because it's giving you the evidence of a directional move, okay, or boundary level. So this goes to a D. The very next day, it gaps down, and it gaps down, gaps down, and that gives you a confirmation with the MACD deflecting low and the stochastic way below 80% to put a down arrow. But what I want you to say is, the difficulty here of putting in an up up arrow when all the things are negative, everything's negative except that the price is going sideways. Remember, if the price goes sideways when the neg the technicals are very negative, that's a positive sign. It might not be very bullish, but it's positive as of that moment. So there it is. Now I would only have been able to put in the up arrow uh, probably here at peak C, and I'm only waiting for a D, and then I got to start being very careful. And there's your D, and the and then you're out. And look, from D, look what happened. So you get your retracement bounce. MACD couldn't do very much. The casting is still very negative. It holds a 200-period moving average. And now you get the real test because if that uh, coral moving average, the 200-period moving average is pierced, that's a very negative thing. And lo and behold, it's pierced. And now we're trying again to try to find some port. Okay, I want you to do that as a technical exercise. More importantly, I'm going to talk about this in terms of the weekly chart and then the monthly chart. Let me expand the monthly. You see the big green candle, save the day, push the push the price higher. You see that we've gone in the month of May just from 11,248.99, four points higher, five points higher, less than five, 11,254.87 to a, a, a new recovery high in May, uh, all-time high in May. And that says to me that I don't I, I could call it different counts. I don't need to right now. Look, there was an instant restart. This could be A to B to C, and finally we've gotten to D. I'm just going to say the MACD is very negative. The stochastic is still positive at 83%. It means that the shorter-term internals are good. The longer-term internals are starting to weaken. And it says be real careful here. You've got to wait for closing prices at the end of the day, for the month, end of the month, that's today, for the week, end of the week, that's today, and for days, today's price. But at this particular point, it doesn't look like we're going to make a new high in the weekly chart, and not going to, that won't extend the monthly, you never know, but I hardly think we're going to go from 11,063 to 11,000 and 11,254.87. Uh, no, I just can't see that happening. So this says that that candle close on the monthly is fine because it's still leg C. You have the whole month of June to see if there's going to be a lower high bar. That's number one. But number two, and this is the point that I want you to make, when you get a certain moving average, in this case the nine period moving average, giving you such good clues to say, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm failing. It says that in the week of the first week of June, the NYA better not break down. It better not take out the low of the week of the 8th of May, that 10,961 low, because that would be a very big negative for both the daily, the weekly, and then we've got to start watching the 10,890 level on the monthly, but we still won't know. But if this occurs within two weeks, it says you've only got two weeks to make a new all-time high or else you've made a peak. And then I'm going to have to reassess, is this really a D with that recycle or is this really a C? I, my thinking right now is this, it is a C, even if there is a pretty sharp pullback in June. We will see about that. Okay. Now, a couple of questions that I had. Um, I had a question. What about the IBB? I chose, not again, not to have any position in the IBB. I would have liked to have still be long via the BIB, but that's just the way it is. I, I didn't take that trade. That's a trade that probably would still be in. 
But that's just, uh, you can't look back like that. You have to look forward. And forward says that the MACD is still strong. The stochastic of the NASDAQ biotech ETF is still very strong at 91%. It's the weekly chart that's starting to fail, and that's going to be the clue. You remember when the market is very weak, the weekly chart takes a long time to repair the damage. When the weekly is, when the daily is very strong and the monthly is very strong, and you see that the weekly chart is trying to show, starting to show signs of wear and tear, it just gives you a heads up to say, hey, one of your very important technical indicators, the weekly MACD stochastic, I call them the technicals, is starting to falter. It's just a heads up to say, maybe the upside is limited. Let's watch it real closely. To get real traction, 368.25, that's about three and three quarter points from here, has to be taken out. And then all of a sudden, you've got the 374s all time high as a magnet to the upside. In the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is that the, the IBB is holding very well. It's up 34 cents. And you've got stocks like uh, Act in the Den, who was it that mentioned it? Terry mentions uh, uh, Forest Labs. Uh, uh, Forest Labs. Is it still around? I thought it was taken over, Forest Labs. Wow, I remember years ago reading about Forest Labs in Barron's and um, FRX, I think, was the symbol. 280, 06, 280. Uh, there it is. So this is A, leg B up in the weekly ch in the daily chart and it's a retest in the cup formation of this is, uh, all of these charts are showing there's a real good chance of being very close if it's not happening now it could happen somewhere uh, towards the end of the towards the middle of next week that we're going to get clues that finally your, your major sector that's we're acting beautifully as well as the pph which is holding beautifully that's the i thought it was pulling back it certainly did pull back but look at this recovery to all-time highs today in the um, pharmaceutical ETF, the market vectors pharmaceutical ETF, leg C right now daily, leg G says C in the weekly, leg E in the monthly. So, um, yeah, it was bought. Okay, Forest Labs were bought by activists. Okay, so that's, a, I th thank you, uh, Terry. And yeah, I thought there was something like that happened, FRX has disappeared. So, um, the day is young. I love to say the day is young. Why? Because this is a market fraught with frustrated buyers that are looking at every opportunity for pullbacks to buy. And there are a lot of people that are very nervous that have been long and are just starting, I can feel it, they're just starting to take some of their money off. Look at Apple. Look at Apple, AAPL. Apple, we spoke about yesterday. I had, uh, I had that email, um, very good question. And uh, Paul had asked about, um, 25% uh, increase in, in short uh, shorts for Apple. What would it do? Well, you can see what it's doing. Apple's only down 99 cents at 130.79. And it's got that rectangle formation. This is the pattern I think is going to happen with Apple. It's going to make some kind of an arch formation, which takes it to maybe three, four points higher, maybe underneath the all time high of 134.54. And then it turns around. And it starts coming back down again. That's the way I'm looking at Apple. Frustrate the bears by going a little bit higher. And then out of the blue, when it looks like the bears have been covering, 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 you start to squeeze the other side by coming back down. So I also wanted to do a couple of other things. So we'll be back straight on after this break. Basil Chapman. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary 
prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N A D E X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Learn about good health and fitness. Living a primal lifestyle with Nico and Paige. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. So what I've done, yeah, I've done a little bit of a, a little stunt. Yeah, I don't remember where I was before. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, this is the VIX index, and the VIX index is uh, the volatility index is the five two minute chart. So it takes off, and it goes like this: it goes peak A, peak B, pulls back, makes a chapel wave, falling X formation, breaks out, and goes to leg C because that's all underneath that B right there. So this could be just a mini AB, and then a coincidence. So here we go: C, D, E. At that point, you see the MACD turns down. Stochastic wasn't confirming because it started to fail way before that, that high bar. And what happens is the VIX index starts to pull back and pull back, pull back, pull back. And then it forms the pattern that I call the lowercase h. That lowercase h goes to a low. See, and think of it like this, a sloping back. It can be straight, sometimes it's sloping. And then it makes an arch formation, uh, like a lowercase h. It's a little simple, lowercase h. And it tests it, breaks it, and now it's testing the 200-period moving average. If the VIX index at 13.85, having hit 14.43, 
a little later on today, what is the time? It's noon, within an hour and a half. If that VIX index starts to break into 1360s or lower, you will see a really nice rally in the Dow that takes it down to like a minus 45, a minus 35, S&P like a, a minus uh, four. All right, that's number one. Now look at this. If you're looking at the inverse, so and the opposite side is if this 200 period moving average becomes a real support like it has been all the way through there, then all of a sudden you're going to see the VIX index go to the 13.95. It's a 13. Oh, I said in 99, 13.95. Then boop, right up into the over that moving average into the low 14s, and you will see this market come back to minus 120 Dow, S&P back down to minus 11. All right. Now here's something else. You see this particular chart here. Look at the way this works. I'm expanding it. This is the two-minute chart. Now you see that the, the VIX index made its high right there at 11 at, at 10.55. Well, at 10.55, the E-mini made its low, came straight down, ran up peak A, peak B, pulls back retest just a little bit above that low bar. So there's the H pattern, and I drew it in here, the lowercase h. But all of a sudden, when it takes off, if the technicals are good, I haven't got the technicals, I've got some other indicators here. But if the technicals were good, which they were on the two-minute chart of, uh, let me show you right here, ESM15, there it is. See the technicals, look at the MACD, improving, 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 deflex back up, stochastic sharps, sharp pull back all the way back down to a slightly higher low. Than it was over there, and then whoops, it goes onto the upside above the, the red maroon line of the uh, nine period moving average. Says that if the um, the E mini, I, I'm not sure if it can because it's real tough with the 200 period moving average of the VIX uh, having held the support. But if at within 20 minutes, if the E minis are above 211 to 2112, the magnet of the 2113 level will kick in and grab it and take it all the way back up. That'll be a four point move to the upside uh, in the E minis, which are down 12. So let me go back to this the VIX index. This is the two minute VIX index starting to pull back. So this is going to be very interesting. Why? Because there's the, the H pattern, lowercase h, that becomes the cup formation. In this case, not only is it a cup formation, it is a W. See how strong it is? A sharp W. Bam, down, bam, up, bam, down, and then whoops, to a to recovery high. Now, what's important about this is that as the technicals improve, it should take, the test will be a break over that level right there, the 2108 level in the E-mini. Well, it went right through it, and that says you should go to a C and a D. Well, we've gone to the D. This is going to be very important. So those are the parameters on the day to watch. We will talk about, and I'll send to my subscribers, the monthly charts, etc. tomorrow, Saturday. They'll be up. The charts will be up Saturday. We'll start to post them over the whole weekend. If you say a lot of charts. Hey, have a great day, folks. Stay tuned for Nico and Paige. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.